court is calling 2022 CR 6548 State of Texas versus John Anthony Ayala. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Michael Villarreal for the state. Defense. Alex Shar for Mr. Ayala. And are you Mr. Ayala? Mm-hmm. Counsel, I'm showing you the discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery and did you review that with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Ayala, I'm showing you what's entitled um, application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Next, I'm showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? I do, Judge. State, are you pleading on the I'm sorry, sorry, proceeding on the indictment as presented. Yes, sir. I'm states proceeding on both counts. And both counts are indecency? Yes, sir. Just different body parts. Okay. Mr. Ayala, I'm showing you what's entitled Courts Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, did you understand in each count you're charged with indecency with a child contact? That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, sir. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your agreement. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your agreement and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, and did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea bargain agreement in this case? Yes, did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison in each count? Did you understand? Yes, Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Ayala, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? According to the plea bargain agreement, there's a $1,500 fine and the state is recommending deferred adjudication. Did you understand that to be the plea? Defense? Yes, Judge. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the paragraph entitled waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Counsel, have there been any such motions? No. Next, I'm showing you outside the agreement. The state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of 10 years. There be no contact with the complainants or their family. Chapter 62, registration and compliance and sex offender uh, supervision with probation. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? However, did you understand that the chapter 62 well, registration is required by law? So you will be a registered sex offender. Did you understand? Yes, then to the offense as charged in count one, how do you plead guilty, not guilty or no contest? Guilty, and count two, how do you plead guilty, guilty. not guilty or no contest? Guilty, no. State any evidence? Yes, you're sure, at this time. State offer states exhibit number one is attachment. No objection. Mr. Ayala, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to ju- jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty of count one and count two. Court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are we proceeding with sentencing? 
Yes, Judge, we'll waive the PSI. Did Warren speak to the recommendations outside the plea agreement and no contact? Yes. Um, so, Mr. Ayala lives with his great grandmother. The victim, his sister, lives with her mom and dad, according to their divorce decree. Um, he's got what so when it, I can understand having no contact with the victim, but as far as or family members that are with the victim, but to say you can't see any family, you can see you have the same family as the victim. And All right, so, state. I'm being told that he lives with the grandmother. And, and I guess what I guess we're asking the court is to carefully tailor of no contact that prevents him from contacting the victim, the complainant victim. Um, as well as we've spoken to the mother of the victim whose her concerns are him having contact with the other minor children. Okay. Uh, so this is a highlight to the concern our insurance, but also ensuring that he doesn't have some family member contacting a family member in order to basically contact the victim through that third person. Does that make sense? Yeah. But with regards to him living with his great grandmother, we understand that as long as there's no other minor children, I mean, that should not be a problem. Okay. All right. How old are you? 20 years old. So, what are you doing with your life? Um, right now, I'm living with my great grandmother. He's on house arrest. He spent about five or six months in jail after he was arrested, and then he was. Bond was lowered and he was placed under house arrest. All right, you're going to have to get employment. Do you understand? All right, State, what do you want to do about this GPS? I believe he's been compliant with the GPS judge, so we'll defer to the court. We have no objection to the court. All right, any drug issues with you? All right, this is what the court is going to do. Uh, the court will run. And I'm assuming, and if I'm incorrect, let me know. I'm assuming counts one and count two are to run concurrent. Is that correct? I think by law they have. Yes, yes but it's not it's, there. So I just want it to be clear on the record. Yes, sir. So count one and count two are running concurrently. Court's going to grant you the 10 years deferred adjudication. There's to be proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no contact with the complainant. There's to be no contact with minors. There's to be chapter 62 registration. Uh, sex offender uh, supervision through probation. Regular UAs. And I'm assuming the sex offender registration unit, they will uh, do field visits. Well, I'm just going to add field visits at least once per month. Is there anything else, uh, probation? Okay. Is there anything else you need from the court? No. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? No. And this does require a lifetime registration. Do you understand? All right. Good luck to you. Attorney for defendant present. Ready, Your Honor. All right. And are you John Anthony Ayala? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. 
Are you the same John Anthony Ayala who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022 CR 6548 for the offense of indecency with the child contact mm -hmm. on January 17th, 2023 for a period of 10 years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. Right, State. Your Honor, violated condition number three, honor about the 22nd day of February 2024. In Bear County, Texas, the defendant, John Anthony Ayala, did then and there fail to obtain and keep gainful employment in a lawful occupation as directed by the court and or supervision officer in violation of condition number 22. All right, is this on the amended? Well, I think it may have been a cross reference, Your Honor, but it should just be a violation of condition number three, given that it was an employment based. All right, any objection to of uh, the state adding that it's not a violation of condition number 22, but a violation of condition number three, counsel? No. All right. So how do you plead to a violation of condition number three? True. All right. State? And Your Honor, the state will waive and abandon the other. Any objections? No, we don't. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number three, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and yes, up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number three? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number three true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. Yes, All right, and what is the proposed agreement? No, no, we uh, agreed to, uh, that my client would go to state ISF for 90 days, Your Honor then return to the SOMU upon release, GPS for one year through Bear County Jail work release, waive the fee, no internet accessible devices for duration of probation, no internet access, net internet accessible devices for duration of probation, require a haven for hope if homeless and zero tolerance. He's not homeless, his mom has a place for him. All right, so why don't, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand, state your name for the record. John Anthony Ayala. All right, why do you not have employment? Uh, I had tried applying to different places, but I either got the runaround or they just never contacted me back. And his mom is present with proof of two places that he did apply, Your Honor. All right, so we want ISF. Is there, what is probation's recommendation? Okay. Uh, that, is, that is a recommendation. John Anthony, I okay. yep. All right, so he's pled true to not having an employment. How is ISF going to help things? Or are we doing ISF because there are other things in the motion that are not being addressed? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right, any objection to the court reading the court summary? No, yeah. Okay, after reading the court summary, my question is why shouldn't he be revoked and go to prison? Because obviously he doesn't want to follow the rules. Well, his, uh, his information to me, Your Honor, is that as far as uh, having other devices, so he didn't have his mom is here to say that he had a flip phone that was not, not internet accessible. Your Honor. Well, I mean, obviously, if they're saying that he's possessed, I mean, that he is, there's history of what he should not be viewing, whether it's a flip phone or not. I never had a flip phone, but obviously it's showing a history. Are we saying it's not showing a history? Not pleading to it. Or is he true. saying his his? Are you saying his mom was in possession of pornography? So, I don't understand why why should you remain on probation? It appears as though you don't want to be on probation. I see what they're asking for and what their recommendation is for, but I just don't understand why you should continue to be on probation. So. Do you wish to go to prison? No, no. It appears that you do, though, by your actions. Since being locked up, it's been a real wake-up experience for him. You know, he's not been in those situations before. 
I mean, he's looking at 20 years in prison. Emphasize I mean, to him and yes, he, he, him. I think that should be a wake up call. He understands where he's put himself, Your Honor. Now, it's not child pornography, but it's saying it's pornography and you're not supposed to be viewing it. So the question becomes, is watching pornography worth 20 years of your life, potentially? Mm -hmm. It seems that you think maybe it is because they're saying they admonish you on February 7th, 2023. And then they admonish you again on April 25th, 2023. I only, I could only think of one time one day. So, no, they said that they admonished you on February seventh and April twenty fifth. So your question becomes: Is por pornography worth going to prison over? Potentially, I keep an open mind, but no, no. you have a choice: either you can watch pornography and potentially go to prison, or either you cannot watch pornography. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So do you want to watch pornography and potentially go to prison or not watch it? Not watch it, ma'am. All right, probation, this is what you all are asking for? And state, this is what your agreement with? I think the, the like lack of clear details with respect to the phone and it had porn on it, but then they were watching it. It's not of a child nature. Um, the state was okay and amenable to going through this and uh, making it a last leg, what would otherwise be a very long journey for this individual. All right. He's joined ISF Cognitive. Then he is to return to uh, the sex offender unit. There has to be GPS until further notice. And that'll be partial for work only. Uh, Wave fees. That's what they put in the probation recommendation. And you're not to have any access to the internet. or internet devices. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court? No. Mm -hmm. All right, you better do better. Yes, ma'am, I, I plan to. I have uh, plans to uh, reapply to different places where I was denied or never contacted again from the same constant contact with them. And not watch porn. And not watch porn. Okay. Thank you.